the Tuskegee experiments. And actually, like last week on Twitter, everyone was talking about this vaccine and a huge fear that the same thing that happened with the, Tus well, what they thought was the same thing that happened with the Tuskegee experiments would happen. And so there was this rumor circulating that, oh, you know, they gave black men syphilis. And that's, that's not what happened. You know, these black right. men already had syphilis. What they did was told them that they were going to treat them and they didn't treat them because they thought, oh, let's see what happens, you know. Um, and so it's very, we need to be very clear about that because that message that we injected syphilis into, into them led to this big, you know, Twitter debate that the new vaccine for COVID-19 is going to be intentionally made to harm black folks. And so not to say we're not justified in these opinions because we have stories like Henrietta Lacks, we have stories like the Tuskegee experiment and plenty more. Um, that does not mean that the same rules don't necessarily apply here. And for several reasons, you want to go through that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want, no, because listen, I, I'm, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, you know, I took my vaccine to go to yellow fever to go to Africa. You know, I'm not yeah. stupid, you know, but at the same time, I don't trust this government. I don't trust this government. So I'm going to need to wait until November after November, <laughs> maybe January. And we, they said it probably won't be a vaccine until after 2021 anyway. So I'm going to need there to be a new administration because I don't trust it because they lie. They lie. They're nefarious. They're evil. They don't like people. They don't like people who look like me. And I'm judging based on how they treated people who look like me. And I just feel like they're stupid, too. So they don't even wear masks. They don't they don't practice social distancing. I, I don't trust them. Well, and then when you add thing. to the fact that the vaccine trials, like it seems like everything is like Dr. Fauci, I think it was yesterday or the day before, it said, you know, he's hot, cautiously optimistic. Oh, was that the hearing on Monday, perhaps? He said he's cautiously optimistic that there could be a vaccine as early as January of 2021. And my question is, who who is being tested? How are we monitoring? Like, shouldn't there be some length of time before we say, bam, we got a vaccine, before we say, bam, said vaccine is appropriately going to be embraced by your body. I mean, you've got people on the far Christian right who are putting out videos about how this vaccine is going to have nanoparticles, it's going to make it the, the 666. The, so, I mean, there's so many fears already out there percolating that it just seems like I, I'm just personally, I'm like, how, where are you studying this? Who, who are the people that you're following for five, 10 years to see how the vaccine does in their body? Like, how does that happen in such a truncated time? So these are just some of the questions that people allegedly yeah, seem I to mean, have. That's, that's a great question. So let's talk about the, how to make a vaccine. So there's six different phases to make a vaccine. The first is experimental, right? So this is like, how do we even actually make the vaccine itself? And that happened really fast. We sequenced the virus for, we call SARS-CoV-2, um, which is the virus that, that, um, that creates the disease COVID-19. That genome was sequenced in January, okay? So that's 30,000 letters that make up, it's kind of like an ID code for the, for the virus, SARS-CoV-2. So because there was already a vaccine in development for SARS, the original SARS, there's only about 1,000 of that 30,000 letters that made the difference. So we already kind of like had a, a template. So you can think about, we just copied and pasted what over and made the vaccine. So the vaccine itself was not difficult to make because we knew the sequence. The second part is preclinical trials. Now to your point, Lori, like what normally happens is that we test mice first and then we test pigs and then we work our way up to primates and then we go to humans. But that's called the preclinical trial, pre preclinical phase, right? We're testing all these animals. Well, what a lot of people are doing is doing all of that testing at the same time. So you normally do it stepwise, but everybody's doing it at the same time, if they do it at all. And so then we go into clinical trials. So there's three phases in the clinical trial. And phase one, which for the U.S., started on March 16th. Now, I want to talk about the U.S. vaccine because it's a new type of vaccine. Typically in the past, you would, like for the flu or other things, you would give someone dead virus or a little bit of the live virus so they would produce an immune response. But this mRNA vaccine is a little bit different, whereas we're not giving you the virus. We're just kind of like giving you, um, on our show, we have an episode called That Rona, um, which is episode 7.5, and we talk about this way back in March. And in that episode, we talk about, like, this mRNA vaccine is like, We've given your body like a picture. 
So you think about it on Instagram. You ever go on Instagram and you look at people's pictures, especially your friends and the people who they date. You ain't never met these people, but you know what they look like. So you can think about the mRNA vaccine like that. Like, I'm not going to give you the virus, but you know what it looks like. So when your body comes in contact with the virus, it knows how to fight it because it's like, I know you. Um, and so that happened on March 16th. The, vi- the vaccine that we're developing in the U.S. is a combination with the, the National Institute of Health, which is Anthony Fauci's group. But the woman who is leading the NIH side um, is actually a black woman. And I don't Kizzy. know if you guys talked about her Her name her is before. Kizzy, right? Her name is yeah, Kizzy? Kizzy- yeah, Kizumika Corbett. And she, you know, I, I've been looking at her papers, and she just published her first paper on the phase one trials. She's actually been very outspoken about the racial disparities, and a lot of people were worried that she could get fired. And, you know, she's been doing the absolute most, so just, like, hands off to her um, for doing that. So when we first talked about the phase one trials, they only have 45 people in it. And in my episode, they hadn't even started it yet. But in the episode that we had, we told people, like, hey, y'all go participate in phase one trials because we know they need black folks and they only picking 45 people, which is typical, mm. but they need more people. So what has happened since then is they actually moved it from 45 to 105 and started including a bunch of older people. Then in phase two is 600 people in the U.S. I'm only talking about the U.S. one. 600 people. And phase three, which is going to start in July, they're doing phase two and phase three at the same time. So another reason why this is fast is because we're doing phase one and phase two and phase three. Now, with phase one, it's completed and done. Like I said, Kizzy already published her paper. And the only thing that they found that was kind of like worrisome is that the different dosages. So they're basically testing how much of the vaccine do we give you so you don't get sick. And they learned in phase one, the highest dose got people sick. Three people got sick. They said, okay, for phase two, we're not using that dose. But other people who are doing phase one and phase two at the same time, they're not going to learn that, right? And so then um, phase three, and this is the most promising part. This is why I feel good about this vaccine. The phase three trials are happening in 30,000 people, okay? 30,000 people. That's a lot of people. Of, the, of what they're doing is they're leveraging a consortium of consented patients they already have. Dr. Fauci talks about this in another conference. And 72 cities within the, in the U.S., um, they also have sampling in South America, Mexico, and Africa. And so this is going to be a diverse sample set of 30,000 people. In the states alone, they have New Orleans on there. They got Atlanta on there. They got Memphis on there. So I feel they got D.C., Philly, all these black cities. I, I am cautiously optimistic <laughs> that given the numbers alone and the fact that we have a black woman leading this team and she is not a, you know, she is an active, vocal black woman um, about our rights, I'm pretty confident that that we're going to have diversity and inclusion. So Do you, you have said a, there's oh. six stages. Hold on. I just wanted to get all, because uh, there's uh, experimental, oh, preclinical, clinical. What was the fourth, fifth, and oh, sixth? So, the clinical, so, so, pre, so experimental, preclinical, and then of the clinical, there's phase one, phase two, phase three. Okay. All right. After so that, three. there is the um, uh, manufacturing. So I didn't talk about this. So here's something that we do need to know. Because they're trying to get this done fast, they're doing manufacturing while they're starting phase three, which is kind of like, uh, because they want, so here's the thing. When we had testing, we never had enough tests. We still don't have enough tests. And the reason why is because we didn't expect this and we didn't prepare for this. And so we have machines and like bigger things that we can't even get if we wanted to in the short time frame that we needed in order to produce testing. The same is true for the antibody. I mean, not for the antibodies. The same is true for um, the vaccines. So we need to make sure that we are able to produce enough vaccines to get everybody vaccinated as quick as possible. And so they're starting the manufacturing at the same time. And so Dr. Fauci calls this manufacturing at risk because the risk is we starting to make the drug, but we don't know if the drug works. Right. So that pauses like gives you a lot of pause. I will say. Um, Dr. Corbett, Kizumika Corbett, she is as she is listed as a um, an inventor on that patent. So I am happy about that, which is really okay. I think she's like one of the leading ones. So that is good um, when you talk to the patent person. But 
Yeah, that's the biggest thing. And a lot of companies are doing it. Some companies are doing phase one and through phase three all at the same time. Um, so, you know, we do need to know that. And as you can imagine, the pressure of the government is like, well, you know, if you are, if you are producing and you've already made millions and billions of them, if something's wrong, then they all go in the trash. And who pays right. for that? Yeah. But here's the thing. When we talk about vaccines, generally speaking, we talk about anti-vaxxers, we talk about the likelihood of having an adverse effect from a vaccine is so low. I mean, we're talking one in hundreds of thousands and sometimes one in millions. And even the effects that have happened, they're not life-threatening. And so getting the vaccine is not necessarily something we should be concerned about. The bigger concern is if I get the vaccine, will it work? So it's not about will the vaccine hurt me. It's about will the vaccine protect me from COVID-19. But I'll tell you this, um, you got two options to get the vaccine, stay at home and isolate yourself or go out and get the virus. And if we talk about risk versus benefit, it's much better to just get the vaccine. Right, Because you had the virus when you said everybody should get it. And then you were like, mm, I wish I had not have gotten it. It was not <laughs> Go ahead, Lori. So that you'd mentioned that that was the American vaccine. And frankly, you know, Americans have been really exceptional at being really bad at handling this virus. So if that's the American <laughs> approach to the vaccine creation, what is the non-American approach? Because I, I might be more interested in that non-American vaccine <laughs> process than taking because especially now that we have identified a profit motive because if you make all these vaccines you prepare all of these these dosages and then if we find out it's not actually accurate or effective i don't know are people going to be getting false you know let me not even put that out in the universe what i really want to know is how are other non-american scientists approaching the vaccine development process yeah so they're doing i mean it's the same process across the world. And so um, there actually is a vaccine tracker. So if you Google COVID-19 vaccine tracker, a website will come up and show you all 144 different countries that they're being developed in and where they are in the testing. There's different types of vaccines. So the one in the U.S. is an mRNA vaccine, which I, which I said kind of like doesn't give you the virus, but kind of tells your body what it looks like. There's a DNA vaccine, which is kind of doing the same thing. Um, and then there's protein vaccines, and then there's actual giving you the virus. So there's all these different types. So other countries are looking at different types of vaccines. And those different types of vaccines have different requirements. There's different risks. There's different manufacturing process. We didn't even talk about storing the vaccines, which is another thing. So there's all these, like, technical details that go into this that really kind of, like, really emphasize why it's so difficult to do. Um, here's the thing. These other, like I said, these other countries are doing the same thing. They're doing things in parallel. And if we think about a lot of pharmaceutical companies, even pharmaceutical companies that we have in the U.S., they're not American. They're not all American. And so they are the people who are, you know, making these drugs, and they are as well doing things in parallel. So it's not like, you know, they're out there. I mean, you remember, I don't know if y'all remember, the scientists in France very early on was like, oh, well, we should see how bad COVID is, let's get some samples in Africa. Y'all remember that? And let's yes, go to do. the Congo yeah, we remember. and try it out. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we should just go, yeah, we should just go to the Congo. And see, that, that's the other country. So I don't know if I trust them. <laughs> and, 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 and Are there any non-white countries? No, but, no, but, but Laurie, Laurie, if, if Dr. Kizzy is the one, I mean, because she's not, she's not the one, she's not Dr. Fauci, she's the one, she's actually in the lab coming up with the vaccine. Right. I trust the sister because of everything that we have to go through that she's, yeah. and, I, and I've heard her in interviews. She's not Candace Owens. She's not Omarosa. <laughs> she's not Diamond and Silk. She's somebody that I think comes from the community and loves the community. I don't mm. think that she's sitting there doing something nefarious. I don't, know. I don't know. I would never suggest that she is. I, I actually think she's amazing. I, I don't obviously don't know her, but I agree that she has been phenomenal every time I've seen her talk. I, you know, I'm just, you know. No, you, you're raising a good questions. point. Okay. <laughs> you got to ask All the right. questions. Listen, you got to ask the questions for sure.